Namaste. So let's consider the difference between religion and Sanatan Dharma. That's really the proper name for what people generally call Hinduism. Uh, I put it in quotes because the word Hindu is not of Vedic origin. It comes from Persian. And when Persia was attacking India, it was a racial and religious slur, a pejorative, uh, a slang of the Persian troops against the people of India because the, uh, the battle line was drawn at the river Sindhu. And so because they couldn't pronounce Sindhu, they call them Hindus. Oh, those darn Hindus, you know. So somehow the name has stuck, but we don't agree, we don't accept it. So the real name of the Vedic religion is Sanatan Dharma, and there's a qualitative difference between Sanatan Dharma and any other religion. Actually, it's not a religion. Huh? For example, would, would you call physics a religion? I mean, there's some areas of physics <laughs> that are very religious, like quantum mechanics. But actual physics is simply a description of the way it is, the way the world works. Things fall down. They have a measurable acceleration. It's always the same at the surface of the Earth. So what is the meaning then of Sanatan Dharma? Sanatan means eternal, always, forever, beginningless and endless. And Dharma means what is, the way it is, why it is the way it is. See, the deep understanding of reality, spiritual reality, not just only physical reality, but what happens to the soul, for example, after death? Well, this is discussed in great detail in the third book of the Vedanta Sutra. See, because you people don't read. <laughs> they don't have any idea. It's not just talking about a certain group of people on a particular continent or in a, a particular country. It's talking about all people everywhere at all times. This is Sanatan. Sanatan Dharma doesn't refer to simply the people of India. Actually, what we call now India is properly named Bharata. And it is the kingdom, the ancient kingdom of King Bharata, or actually Emperor. Bharata, whose empire stretched from Eastern Europe, I mean, even as far as Greece, all the way through China and Indonesia on the other side. He had a huge kingdom or empire, actually. That was all named Bharata after him. See, in Sanskrit, in some of the cases, the possessive is formed by lengthening the first vowel. So King Bharata, his country was called Bharata. See, with a long A. So that's the real name of India, and you'll see it on all the Indian money, for example. So this kingdom, Bharata, was the exponent or the promoter of Sanatan Dharma not just any ordinary dharma, because if you look at all these religions, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, all the major religions and all the minor ones too, they all start at a certain point in time, isn't it? Christianity started with Christ, Islam started with Muhammad, Buddhism started with Buddha and so on. 
They have a founder. They were founded, which means they came into existence at a certain time. So this means they're non-eternal. They're material. And because they're material, they are essentially false. Because they're sectarian, they are limited only to a certain country or a certain group of followers or a certain people or race or what have you. So Sanatan Dharma is not limited like that. The descriptions of what happens after death in the third book of Vedanta Sutra don't just apply to Hindus, quote unquote, they apply to all living beings. And the origin of Hinduism doesn't exist. The origin of the Vedic culture is unrecorded. It has existed longer than written records were kept. It's beginningless, in other words. Why? Because in the distant past, in the Satya Yuga, there was only one religion. There was only one culture. There was only one government for the whole world. And that was based on Sanatan Dharma, because it's just the way it is. <laughs> just the way it is. The law of karma is the same for everybody. It doesn't matter what religion you think you are or what race or what nationality or whatever you limit yourself as being. No. It is eternal, universal, and as true as any other scientific laws. But people nowadays actually due to the Christians colonizing India, they have tried to cast it as just another sectarian religion, but it isn't. Even though within Sanatana Dharma, you will find traditions that have a founder. Those are sectarian religions existing within Sanatana Dharma. So you see, Sanatana Dharma is so big, it's so vast, it can even host sectarian religions within it. But the sectarian religions themselves want to claim their, their beliefs as absolute. But how can they be absolute when they have a beginning? If it has a beginning, it will also have an end. So there will be a time in the future when there is no more Christianity, when there is no more Islam, when there is no more Buddhism and all the other religions that have a beginning because they will have ended. But there is no time in the future or the past when there was not Sanatan Dharma, what we call Dharma Sara or the essence of Dharma, the esoteric teaching, doesn't have a beginning or an end because it simply talks about the way it is in the spiritual view. The way it is in the spiritual view is that because of desire, we are caught, we are trapped in the material world. Huh? I'm going to do a separate video on that <laughs> because that's a great subject in itself. But what I want you all to understand is that this teaching is not a sectarian religion. Even though we talk about Sri Vidya, even though we talk about the teaching of the Buddha, even though we talk about various Vedic literatures, uh, and even epistemology in the form of existentialism, way back in the beginning of our channel, Still, this is not a sectarian belief or teaching. It is Sanatan Dharma. We're talking about the way it is, the way it always has been and always will be for everybody, irrespective of birth or caste or class or nationality or beliefs or anything like that. You know, you can believe that water runs uphill, but 
that doesn't make any difference to water. <laughs> water will cheerfully ignore you and continue to run downhill as long as time exists. So in the same way, <laughs> the spiritual laws elucidated in the Sanatan Dharma are inviolable. Uh, you can imagine that there's some other way, uh, but that doesn't make it true. You know, just like our friends, the Republicans, <laughs> they can imagine that, that COVID is a hoax, but it's not, it's a real disease. So in the same way, these sectarian religions have various imaginary teachings. And this is the greatest obstacle on the road of truth. Because to attain truth, you have to get rid of everything that's false. And like we talked about in an, another recent video, to attain enlightenment, you have to get rid of all the objects of consciousness except consciousness itself. Now, this is a law. It's as scientific as gravity or light or anything else. And it applies to everybody. Doesn't matter what your religion or country or people or race or whatever is. It's still true. And if you test it, you will find that it is true. So this is the point. See, just like Buddha said, my teaching is open. There's no secrets. Whatever you see is what you get. <laughs> this is it. And we invite you to come and see, to actually experience and test it for yourself. Not that you should take any of this on faith, but that you should try it, put it into action, experience it in your life and see for yourself that it's true. Just like a scientist goes into the lab and he tests a certain scientific law to see if it's true or if it's falsifiable. See, this is the process of scientific knowledge, empiricism. So if you have a belief that can be falsified, it's not the truth. But if you try again and again and it, it holds up, under critical scrutiny, then it's true. But of course, each of us has to do the work. It's not that, you know, I can say this and that and something, or, you know, or Buddha can say, or Krishna or anybody in the authority can say this is in, and such is true, and then you have to believe it. A, you don't have to believe it. And B, you do have to prove it for yourself in order to actually know it. Simply knowing words about it is not the truth because the real truth cannot be expressed in words. Words are simply symbols and they are not the things they represent. So I hope all of this has clarified for you. If you have any doubts, put questions in the comments, but one should be very clear that these different religions and teachings are simply metaphors made of words and that the actual teaching is an experience that everyone has to have for him or herself. And that is the actual enlightenment. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.